Hello everyone, this is Oshani Rajgupta from Chinta. Today, we will be learning a problem from Regional Mathematics Olympiad 2003. This is problem number 4 and it is from Combinatorics. But as usual, this will not be just a solution video. We will learn about the underlying concept in greater detail and we will also talk about a problem solving strategy that you can use in many other problems. So what is the concept that we will learn today? It's the stars and bars method. Even if you have not seen this before, I will talk about it in some detail. So you'll be able to learn it from here. Then we will talk about this problem solving strategy that is useful not only in combinatorics, but also in number theory and in other parts of mathematics. It's called introducing the dummy variable. I will tell you more about it as we progress through this video. And at the end of this video, I will give you a challenge problem and you can tell me the answer in the comment section. Okay. All right. But let me first tell you what this problem is all about. Remember, we will learn concepts only in the context of problems. That's how we actually learn concepts. So, this problem says that this is a given data. It says that we have three letters X, Y and Z or three variables which are all non-negative or, or non-negative and their sum X plus Y plus Z, the sum of them is less than or equal to 100. Of course, the least it could be is zero. 0 to 100. So this means that x plus y plus z could be equal to 0, it could be equal to 1, it could be equal to 2 and so on up to it could be equal to 100 because it's less than equal to 100. That's what's given. The question is, the goal of the problem is to find the number of ordered triples x, y and z with this particular property. So we have to find all such triples, all such solutions, if you may say so, of this inequality. We have to find that. The underlying concept that we will be using is called the stars and bars method. We have talked about it before in other videos in this particular channel. In the Mathematics Olympiad program at Chinda, it is discussed in the Combinatorics module. It's a very powerful tool and the underlying fundamental idea, fundamental idea is bijection. I will not talk about bijection in this particular video. There are other videos in this channel which discusses bijection. It's a very powerful tool in combinatorics. But I will talk about stars and bars method. So let's talk about it. The stars and bars method is best illustrated using an example. So suppose we want to find out all non-negative solutions of this equation. We want to find out all non-negative solutions of this equation a plus b plus c equal to 7. Just an example. So we will denote a by the color red, we will denote b by the color green and we will denote c by the color blue. And then we will create a picture. This is the picture that I use all the time. So there is a red lake, lake of water, red water. There is a blue lake uh, that, or a green lake and then there is a blue lake. Okay. And these lakes are all sort of split from each other using these bars. Now what you have to do is you have seven balls and you would want to put these balls in these three lakes. The question is, 
how many ways you can do this. So maybe one way is you put three balls in the red lake, you put three, two balls in the green lake, and you put two balls in the blue lake. That's one scenario. Another scenario could be you put one ball in the red lake, you put no balls in the green lake, that's also a possibility, and you put all the remaining six balls in the blue lake. Now, what this produces is essentially solutions of this particular equation. So, the first solution is really 3, 2, 2. So, A equals to 3, B equals to 2, and C equals to 2. So, you have adding up to 7, of course. The second solution is A is 1, B is 0, C is 6, right? Now, each of these solutions have the corresponding star and bar code. I'll write that. Each solution has a star and bar code. So, let me write what the star and bar code of the solution 3, 2, 2 is and you will immediately understand what I mean. The corresponding code is you have three balls, one bar, two balls, one bar, two balls. Actually, instead of balls, some people use stars. That's why it's called stars and bar code. Okay. All right. Similarly, I have another code for this particular solution. The code for 106 is star bar bar, nothing in between these two bars because this is 0, and then 6 stars. Right? So, given a solution, you can create a star and bar code. And given a star and bar code, you can create a solution. So, I will show you what I mean. Suppose I create a star and bar code. And can you tell me what is the solution corresponding to the star and bar code in the comment section? Okay. Okay. That's great. So, now we understand what this star and bar code and solution how they are related, right? The nice thing is we can easily count the number of star and bar codes. Here is the final idea. The number of solutions is equal to the number of codes. Because for each code you have a solution and for each solution you have a code. This is essentially what the bijection principle is all about. So, you just count the number of codes. How many codes are there? Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 symbols, 7 stars and 2 bars. You can think of each of these plus signs as bars. So, 2 bars and 7 balls. So, 9 symbols. So, how many ways you can arrange the 9 symbols? 9 factorial ways. But 2 of them are same because both of them are bars. So, divide by 2 factorial. And 7 of them are same because all 7 of them are stars. So, divide by 7 factorial. Here, I am using the concept of permutation with repetition. If you don't know what it is, do not worry. You can look into any book, any nice book on combinatorics. One book that I really refer to all the time is the Principles. Principles and Techniques in Combinatorics. I have put the link of the in the description for that particular book. It's a very beautiful book. You can learn a lot from it. So, 
you can write this in a compressed manner as 9 choose 2. Okay. So that is the number of codes that you can produce using 7 stars and 2 bars. So the number of solutions is equivalent to the number of codes. Hence, this many solutions are there. So this is essentially what the concept is all about. The stars and bar concept. Okay. Now that we understand the concept, we will use this strategy to finally solve the problem. Remember, the mathematical Olympiad problems are not just about concepts and formulas. You will have also have strategies that you can use to attack those problems. That's what makes these things very much interesting. So let's use this dummy variable strategy. So it's the final solution. I'll remind you, we are interested in x plus y plus z less than or equal to 100, the number of solutions to this inequality. So what we will do is, we will instead use an equation where we use a dummy variable w equals to 100. Now see, we can easily calculate the number of non-negative solutions of this equation using the stars and bar method. It's simply there are 100 stars and remember each plus sign was a bar. So 3 bars. So 103 factorial, 103 symbols are there, 103 factorial the, divided by 3 factorial because these 3 bars are alike and 100 factorial because these 100 stars are alike or 100 and 3 choose 3. That is the number of codes that we can produce using 3 bars and 100 stars. And that is equivalent to the number of solutions of this equation, number of non-negative integer solutions to this equation. Now my claim is that this is the same as the number of solutions to this particular inequality. Well, almost the same. Why is that? You see, the reason it is the same is because, or almost the same rather, is because if you put w equals to 5, let's say, then x plus y plus z is equals to 95. That is one of these conditions, right? Remember, x plus y plus z is less than or equal to 100 means one of these several conditions. x plus y plus z equals to 0, equals to 1, equals to 2, etc. up to equals to 100. So, for different values of w, we are actually in one of these 101 equations, right? For example, for w equals to 5, we are in the equation, we are in the case, this equals to 95. For w equals to 98, we are in this particular case, right? So, whatever may be the value of w, whatever may be the value of w, we are getting an a solution of this particular inequality, right? Okay, so we could have declared this particular number as the solutions, the number of solutions of this inequality, but we have to be a bit careful because there is one more condition. The condition is that it should be ordered triples. So, for example, 2, 3, 95 is a solution of x plus y plus z equals to 100, but so is 3, 2, 95, right? But for us, all of these, both of these solutions are equal, the same. So, it's very easy to fix this particular problem. You have to simply divide the value of 103 choose 3 by some number. Now, your challenge is to tell me what that number is. What should I divide this by 
to make sure that I get the number of ordered triples instead of number of any triples. Okay, it's very simple. You can tell me in the comment section and uh, keep on doing great mathematics. I will see you in the next one. For more problems and resources, you can check the link in the description and uh, stay happy. Take care. Bye.